Hey, welcome to Intro to AI, Constraint Satisfaction Problems, Cryptarithmetic Puzzles with Tokyo EdTech. That is me. So today we're going to be taking a look at a type of constraint satisfaction problem known as Cryptarithmetic Puzzles. Or did I just kind of repeat myself? Anyway, these types of puzzles are also referred to as verbal arithmetic. Um, so basically what you have here is you have letters and each letter maps to a certain number. So for example, S could be three, it could be four, it could be five, whatever that number is. And so the value of this plus this is gonna equal this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and figure out how to solve that using a little bit of Python. This uh, tutorial is gonna be aimed at beginners. I'm teaching a new AI course and I got some great students and we just did this uh, a few weeks ago. So I'm kind of doing it from memory. So if I stumble, please forgive me. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and import OS and I'm going to do OS.system clear. That will clear the screen. That'll work on Linux and Mac. I'm using Linux. I think if you're a Windows user, it, I think it's CLS, but don't quote me on that. So I'm just going to go ahead and print uh, cryptarithmetic puzzle. Alrighty. So uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to try to kind of brute force this particular problem. So what I mean by brute force is that we're just going to try a bunch of random numbers till we get the answer. And then we're going to go back and try to add some constraints um, so that it makes a little bit more sense what I'm doing here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I need to define uh, actually I'm gonna go ahead and start with a loop sorry not gonna define anything quite yet so while true so you can see here we have s e n d plus m o r e equals m o n e y so what's what, what's going to happen here is we're going to take s times a thousand plus e times a thousand plus n sorry plus e times a hundred plus n times ten plus d times one so what we need to do is we need to get some values for those so we're, gonna, we're just going to do straight ahead brute force no logic and just hope for the best so we got s we've got uh, e we've got n we've got d and now we have M, we have O, not zero, we have R, and now we're starting to see some repeats here. So let me move that down a little bit. I want to use a big font so it was easy to see what's going on on the screen. So S E N D M O. Now R and then R, and then E we already have, so we don't need to do that again. M we already have, O we already have. N we already have, E we already have, and Y we do not have. Okay. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go ahead and just try to randomly find the solution. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and come back up here and I'm gonna go ahead and import the random module. And so then what we're gonna do here is we're gonna say that uh, S equals random dot rand int and it's gonna be a random integer from zero to nine. And that does include nine. So I'm gonna go ahead. Now again, uh, those of you who know this kind of puzzle, we're gonna make it a little bit more, uh, well, we'll improve this later. But for now, we're gonna try and brute force this. And so then what we gotta do is try to figure out, you know, did we find a solution? Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and choose random values. And so what we got to do is we got to calculate send. We got to calculate more. We got to calculate money. Now, normally I wouldn't use capital letters uh, in Python if it looks like a constant, but it kind of just makes sense here because of the way the, the, pro the problem is written. So send, it's going to be S times 1000 plus E times 100 plus n times n plus d. Okay. More is going to be m times 1000 plus o times 100 plus r times 10 plus e. Now money's a little bit longer, so it's going to be m times 10,000 plus 
O times 1000 plus N times 100, oops, 100 plus E times 10 plus Y. Okay, so we calculate the, the numerical value of send more and money. Then we're going to check if send plus more equals money. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and break out of this while true loop. And then down here, I'm just going to go ahead and print. I'm going to use F strings to make it uh, easier. And actually, I'm going to go ahead and just do it like this. Okay. And it. And. All righty. So, what we're going to do is this is going to be S E N D M O R E. And there should be one more here. M O N E and Y. And I'm just going to try and make it look a little bit nicer. So, two, one, two. And then because this way it gives you a little space to put a plus sign here. And then what I could do is if I really wanted to, I could put print. I don't really need an F string here, but let's just put it in there to make it look a little more balanced. Um, again, hopefully this will work. I'm kind of doing this from memory. So, how's that? Okay. Alrighty, so I think we're ready. Um, so let me just kind of review what I did here. So I just imported OS. That was just to clear the screen. That's all it really does. Uh, and then we're going to use a random module. And what we're going to do is we're going to choose random values for S E N D M O R Y from zero to nine. And nine is inclusive. It will include the nine. And then we calculate the value of send, calculate the value of more, and calculate the value of money. Oops, forgot the capital Y there. You guys probably saw that. And see if we, it comes up with a solution. Actually, we didn't need to do that. I'm going to execute it. And it is running. Sorry, it's running down here. And it found a solution already. So it found 96721096. So I will just kind of assume that's correct. 1617. Yes, that, this is correct. So that was pretty quick. Um, now, those of you who are a bit more familiar with quick mathematic puzzles, probably say, well, that's not quite the right answer. And so if we go back here, we can see that the answer should be uh, S should be 9, uh, E should be 5. So let's see if we got that. Uh, S should be 9, E, no, E should be 5. Okay, so we're missing some of the constraints on this one. So let me just fix the output a little bit because we want this to look more proper. So this should be lined up with that. So it looks a little bit nicer. We're going to just run it again real quick. Oops, that was too far. Sorry. And let's see if that quite right where we want it. You notice it gave us a different solution there. The other thing is numbers shouldn't begin with a zero. Okay, so we're starting to see that, okay, this isn't quite what we wanted to happen. Now, it is technically a solution, but it doesn't meet all of the constraints. So this is where it's going to get interesting is we're going to do some constraint satisfaction. Um, the other thing I want to do here real quick is I want to do the count. I want to keep count of how many times this loop executes. So I'm going to do count plus equals one. And then go ahead and print. Print count. And see how many times it takes through to solve this. Let's go ahead and run that again. Now that gets a little bit more interesting. You can see it took 131,498 attempts. That's very fast, but it took a lot of attempts to do that. So let's run that again. Okay, 9,500. And so you can see, so far low of 9,000, high of 130,000. Well, that one did it in 661, which is pretty cool. So let's go back and add some more constraints. Okay. So the first constraint that we know of is that S cannot be a zero because numbers just don't start with zeros. So what we can do is if S equals zero, continue. And what continue does is it takes us 
it skips the rest of the loop and it goes back up to the the while true statement okay so because zero we don't want a zero for s we don't even need to bother to do the rest of this we just uh sorry it should be if we just do continue so if uh and we know m is the same thing same thing so we don't want s and we don't want m to equal zero let's go ahead and try it and see what happens to our constraint satisfaction problem now that one i don't know if you can tell but it was definitely visibly longer uh than the original one so this was 249,000. let's go ahead and run this again okay so you can see each one of these is definitely taking longer this one's really long 713,000. so that's quite long there um so but it is coming up with solutions let's go back here and see did it come up with the one correct solution so s should be nine e should be five n should be six d should be seven so we should see nine five six seven in our solution and we don't see that we see nine four five nine there's one more constraint that we're missing this is where it kind of gets a little bit interesting if you ask me is that no values can repeat so if s is 9 which we know that's the correct answer if s is 9 e can't be 9 n can't be 9 d can't be 9 and so on and so forth so this adds obviously another level of constraint okay so how are we going to do that and it's gonna be pretty simple so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna create a list called digits and in this list, I'm going to put each digit from 1 to 9. And then what we're going to do is we're also going to use the random module. We're going to do random.shuffle digits. And what that does is, as you can imagine, it just shuffles these digits randomly. And so then what we'll do from here is we're going to do digits dot pop and what that does is whatever the last digit is it takes it out it pops it off of the list takes it out of the list and it's going to assign it to s so we're going to do the same thing for each of these particular numbers so that ensures that each number is only used one time So by doing this, we're not going to see, because it's not totally random, what's random, but we can only see, and only use each number once. So S isn't going to be 9, and E is not going to be 9. Okay? So this kind of adds an extra constraint to the problem. So let's go ahead and run that and see what happens. Hey, notice how it's taking longer to run. Okay? And so it gave us... Now that one took 1,090,625 attempts, and it found the answer, 9567-1085-1652. So if I, where's that at? Uh, yeah, so we got S, this is the only S, but we see an E here, so that's 5. We got E here, that's 5, and we got E here, that's 5. N is 6, and it is 6 here. M is 1, and then O is 0. So if we go back to here, I think we've got the correct solution. O0, M1, Y2. O0, M1, Y2, yes. So it does give us the correct problem. Now notice again, I'm just going to run it again, just see how long it takes. But you can see, just with the extra constraint, for every extra constraint, it's going to take a little bit longer. Also because we're doing this basically randomly. Now, there are other ways to make this more efficient, uh, but this is a way that I thought was easy enough that relative beginner students could understand that without having to do recursion or anything fancy like that. So you see, this time it took 4.8 million uh, tries to get the right solution. I'm just going to run that one more time, then I'll go through the code, and I'll let you out of here. So I really enjoy waiting and kind of the anticipation of whether we're going to get the correct solution. But you can see how it keeps coming up with the one correct solution each time. And this time it only took 2.5 million tries.
Yeah. So that is that. That is our crypto arithmetic puzzle. Um, so basically, you can see we have a given crypto arithmetic puzzle, and we are keeping count, but we don't have to do that. But it's kind of nice to do it that way. So we have digits from zero to nine. We shuffle this, and then we pop off, in this case, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We pop off the last eight digits, and then we check the constraints. Was S zero? If so, we come back around, start over. Was M zero? If so, we come back around, try it again. Because we know that S and M are not allowed to be zero because they start the numbers. Then we calculate the value of send. That's just basic math there. Calculate the value of more and the value of money. Do a simple if statement. If it's correct, we use break. And break will end this while true loop. And then we print the solution. And that, my friends, is that. A little bit of AI, kind of classical AI goodness for you. And I hope that, yeah, you learned something from this. So take care and keep on coding.